take out from max out. And then let's go into minimum out. There we go. Really interesting shape, kind of almost uh, the way a sine would turn into a triangle. So let's adjust the frequency of our A147 over here. So we can see that a little bit faster. Now let's bring it really, really low. We should get a very subtle change. It might take a moment for this to cycle. But let's just be patient. There it goes. It's kind of just shrinking, shrinking. There we go. And it should come back in a moment. Maybe a little longer than a moment. There we go. Okay. There we go with the minimum out. Now let's try back at the saw wave. So we're going to take this out and then go in with our saw wave. And we should have something similar to that, but with a saw wave injected instead. our point where our cell wave is most visible. Just for kicks, let's actually zoom out some over here so we can see perhaps a different view. Of our waveform. Really interesting stuff. Now let's go ahead and spice it up even more and uh, get a couple of other LFO signals in there and audio rate signals. We did kind of the basic part of this already, so let's kind of go into some new territory. Um, I'm just going to take the other VCO that's kind of hanging out right here. And let's see, we have a saw wave there, so let's actually just take a sign from here and then we'll just pipe it into input number three right here. And let's see, over at our oscilloscope, I'm not entirely sure how useful that view is going to be for us. So let me see if I can get back to our zoomed in portion. There we go. That might be a little better for illustration purposes. We're just combining waves here. I'm going to bring up the frequency of my LFO just a little bit. Let me play with the octave of my A111, bring it up one octave. That's a nice little sound right there. Cool. All right. Now, let's get another LFO signal going there. Um, this time, I think what I want to do is maybe make this a gate trigger so that I'm triggering my envelope over here. And you can probably see that if I move that a little bit. There you go, you see that? It's triggering. Then I'm going to take this envelope over here and I'm just going to pipe it right over here. not entirely sure how useful of a modulation this is. Make sure my cables are plugged in normally. We have four right there. I'm 
bring down my envelope generator to kind of a short, kind of plucky type envelope. Now at this point it might be difficult to distinguish between the two. Let's see. My uh, 8147 is actually going into the second input right here. So let me take that out for a moment so we can hear what the envelope is doing over there. There we go. So that's with just the A140 and then the two VCOs going into there. Kind of a different shape going on. And let me actually decrease the triggering of the envelope to kind of give it a little bit longer. Okay. Now that we have that, now let's bring the A147 back in. It's still kind of favoring the sign shape, but let's try and play with the octave and see if we can't change that situation going on there. We'd definitely be able to change the timbre. I'm actually liking this a little bit. Kind of a nice kind of mysterious type sound. Okay. Now, for this, I'm going to actually zoom out a little bit. I want to get a better look at this. There we go. So we're getting some very, very interesting shapes. Now at this point, um, once you get a basic tone, timbre, effect that you like, um, now is really the time that you can go in and start adjusting the subtlety of your patch. Um, so for instance, if you wanted to maybe uh, tweak the frequency just a little bit, because you want a more kind of pronounced effect or a faster modulation, you could do that. Um, you could also very subtly change the modulation by adjusting the envelope. Because as we saw before, that was actually a fairly subtle change current. And then just for experimentation purposes, we could actually just flip over to the high setting. Let's do that. Just see what it does. So lots of interesting possibilities to be had by combining four different signals. And again, audio rate together with sub audio rate. So for the most part, that is going to be the demonstration for this segment of the A172 series. Um, for the most part, all I really wanted to do was kind of combine the two types of signals. It took a little bit longer than I actually expected. Um, so probably what happened is I had to break this into two parts um, since I like to kind of com condense the videos a little bit. Uh, so you may be watching now part two of two. Um, at any rate, for the last segment coming up, um, I wanted to kind of possibly compare uh, ring modulation, but I also wanted to show you a little bit about how you can sort of tweak the results that you get from here. I mean, we saw normally you can adjust the frequency and all that good stuff, uh, but there's also ways that you can kind of make this a more fine-tuned type situation. And we'll talk about those here in the next video. So thank you very much for watching and keep on patching out there.